the astronauts read out. Hi, I'm Matt, and this is NASA Now. The role of a NASA scientist is to ask questions and search for answers. That's exactly what the Jupiter-based mission Juno is all about. Today we're going to find out what scientists hope to learn about this enormous planet that is sometimes referred to as the gatekeeper to the solar system. That's ahead. First, here's what's happening at NASA Now. NASA scientists discovered new evidence that Earth has been hit by many asteroids similar or larger than the one thought to have killed the dinosaurs some 65 million years ago. By combining sophisticated computer models with physical evidence from the past, researchers are able to show that there may have been as many as 70 giant asteroids that impacted our planet 1.8 to 3.8 billion years ago. Further research shows at the same time that approximately four similarly sized objects hit the moon as well. These findings support the theory that Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune formed in different orbits nearly 4.5 billion years ago. It was the movement to their current orbit four billion years ago that triggered a solar system-wide bombardment of comets and asteroids called the Late Heavy Bombardment. The gas giant known as Jupiter may hold the answers to the very beginning of the solar system. To gain more insight about the composition, evolution, and atmosphere of Jupiter, NASA developed the Juno mission. Tracy Drain, a Juno systems engineer from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, joins us with information on the Juno spacecraft and what scientists hope to learn when it reaches Jupiter in the summer of 2016. Jupiter is important for a lot of reasons. It is the largest planet in the solar system, and scientists believe that it was probably the first planet to form in our solar system, and that it still maintains uh, most of the material that it had way back during the formation. So learning more about Jupiter will help us understand more about the solar system itself. You can think of Jupiter as sort of a time capsule for the whole solar system. This is the Juno spacecraft. And the biggest features are the three large solar arrays. The fact that the solar arrays are so large, much larger than the body of the spacecraft, because Juno is so far away from the sun, it needs those to be able to gather enough light, generate enough power for the spacecraft. Out here on the edge, this boom holds one of our instruments called the MAG. It's the magnetometer. It has a flux, two flux gates magnetometers and some little star cameras to help it understand exactly where it is. It has to be this far away because the magnetic field generated by the spacecraft might interfere with the measurements it's trying to make of the magnetic field of Jupiter. In the middle, this shiny silver dome that looks like one of those old-fashioned popcorn poppers, that's actually our high-gain antenna that we use when we're really far away from the Earth to send data back to Earth and also for the spacecraft to get demands from the ground. And you can see tucked up under this high gain antenna is what we call the vault. This is a box made of titanium where our sensitive electronics are stored inside in order to protect them from the intense radiation around the planet Jupiter. These little pedestals that have three little items poking out of them, those are the thrusters that we use to control the spacecraft attitude. We use those in, to send out little puffs of gas in order to adjust the way the spacecraft is pointing. And Juno actually is a rotating spacecraft. It spins not very fast, and we do that because that helps maintain stability of the spacecraft. You have to fire your thrusters a lot less often to maintain the attitude that you want because of the whole gyroscopic effect. 
here on the back side of the spacecraft. This is the WAVES instrument. And I'll also point out two little antennas very close on the side of the high-gain antenna. One is the medium-gain antenna, which has a wider beam width than the high-gain. You can think of the high-gain as like a giant flashlight, a really focused, powerful flashlight. And if you're shining that on the wall, you see a fairly small spot. So you have to be pointed really carefully at the, at the earth or the spot on the wall in order to communicate, right? But if for some reason you have to be off-pointed a little, you won't be able to communicate with a high gain antenna. The medium gain antenna has a wider beam width. You can think of it as more of a floodlight sort of. And then right next to it is a low gain antenna. And you can think of that as like a light bulb where it's sending out light like almost in a big hemisphere in one direction or sending out a radio signal which travels at the speed of light. We use that one when we might not be sure what the attitude of the spacecraft is, so you can still talk to it. And there's one on the back, too, sending out that little hemisphere of radio signal in, uh, on the other side. To find out more about the Juno mission and to track the progress of the spacecraft, check out the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Teachers, our expert has provided us with some great links to educational resources you can use to keep your students in the know about Juno. For more information, visit the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to visit our Facebook page and leave a comment. We'll see you next time on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.